When we talk about human dynamics in the digital age, we need to talk about social practice, how we interact with each other. In our research in Brazil, we call this social practice based on digital culture. Digital culture changes the ways that we interact. We keep uh, conversations, we find each other, we share information, we collaborate. Uh, so if you try to understand this new kind of social practice, you need to develop new tools to investigate them, to research with them. With these new tools, I'm not saying something just technical tools, but methodological tools, ways to understand the data, ways to understand, new ways to understand the problem. And we will find new kinds of practice. Let's give some example. For, uh, the, the practice of linking, linking objects, digital, for example, a video to a text, uh, to a photograph inside the same document. It's a new practice, new social practice. The practice uh, of voting, uh, liking, and giving some uh, hard signals to the digital content, it's a new social practice, new social interaction practice. So one last practice, for example, uh, answering instant messaging. This is a new social practice. So if you look at the human dynamics in the social practice, relative social practice in digital age, you need to develop new tools. This is the main question for us. We are trying to research that. We are trying to develop uh, new kinds of projects to understand this. In some senses, uh, Brazil and India, they are really close in the same situation. In other sense, totally different. Mm -hmm. But I will give you some numbers just to demonstrate what I'm talking about. For example, we have only 14% of adults uh, having studying in an undergraduate level nowadays in Brazil. We have only 58.4% of young people from uh, 18 to 24 studying in an undergraduate level in Brazil. So we have the same problem. We don't have public or private institution enough to all the young people in Brazil, even the adults. So we need to use the same strategy uh, to provide digital content, to create uh, digital certifications using mocks or different kinds of solutions to doing that. So in this sense, uh, I think we are in the almost in the same situations. But Brazil, we have 240 million people. It, it, it's much smaller than India. You are big huge from our scenario. And when you think uh, how to develop the digital content. The question is, if you imagine a user that is, uh, who is looking for digital content, he's looking for uh, an undergraduate course, for example, in this situation, it's easy. Because if you have a good website, a good provider, you can uh, provide this kind of uh, courses, this kind of uh, solutions. But and how can we talk with the people they are, aren't looking for this kind of uh, certificate? So in this sense, you can use the social media. You can conceive new ways to create content, new ways to diffuse content, new ways to connect content uh, about education programs with people using uh, social networks in a really normal way. So you can merge, you can remix this digital content. And in this sense, you can attract new students. You can attract people using a communication strategy uh, to connect with an educational strategy. In the middle of the both, the education strategy, the communication strategy, you need to learn lots of things because these people think differently. And even it's difficult to talk with each other because they think in a very structured way and another even think in an unstructured way. So how we can connect? And in this sense, we are trying to develop some pilot projects in Brazil, some new kinds of experiences uh, to attract students. And maybe we can have some sharing about this strategy, about this experience with you in India. For example, if you analyze data from what's people searching inside uh, YouTube, okay, 
and you can create an, uh, an uh, advertisement campaign to connect educational content uh, to be answered in YouTube to these people. So they can take a small piece of a whole a program and have interest in, in, the, in following the next steps. So you can connect the student with the whole program, but not present the whole program first, but present pieces of contents. We have uh, lots of material, unfortunately just in Portuguese, but we have reports. Uh, in the last 10 years in Brazil, we have developed uh, lots of digital divide projects. Uh, to introduce people using basic skills of computers and to present them uh, with small programs, small courses to follow. And we, we keep doing that nowadays. So we have uh, so much experience doing that. I can't, I can't talk about that in our experience uh, in four different ways, okay? First of one, publishing content. So you have many, and, and maybe uh, I'm sure that you have here in India, you have many of communities and uh, closed groups, for example, in Facebook, which are very specialized groups or communities to discuss in some uh, kinds of special teams. In, in my example yesterday, I was talking about plant recognition. So people, it's, it's a very technical, uh, topic because to recognize a plant you need to understand many uh, differences from the, the plants that are almost the same but they are different and the scientific names are uh, completely different uh, for example. So people take pictures using their mobile phones, they are on the streets, they are uh, visiting a, a, a friend, uh, sightseeing, something like that. They take pictures from the plants and they send that picture uh, in a Facebook fan page. So they put some l little, little, small information about the picture, where the picture came from, uh, when you, you took the picture, and just that. So after that, people began to discuss about that. And we have, we have in this example, 20, 26,000 people and in the middle, you have specialists from academic, uh, very important groups, uh, doctors, you have amateurs, you have uh, people in the middle, students, and they, they begin to discuss. And after maybe five, three, five to ten, it's the medium, uh, messages, they arrive in a conclusion. So this plant is, for example, XXXX. So, in, in, in these dynamics, you have some educational processes happen. And how you can uh, deliver your content from the digital library to help people solve the question and to help people say, look, if you go to the National Library of India and take a look at this link, you will discover that this plant is XXX, for example. And to do that, you need to connect it the, the, the content with the dynamics of conversation. So you need to create a communication strategy. It's not just provide the content, okay, it, it, it's there. You need to go inside this community to understand their dynamics, maybe keep discussing with some hubs uh, and understand what they are doing there. Because even you can collect it those images and put those images inside the digital library. So it's a two-way path, you know? You provide content and you collect the content. So uh, publishing content, it's one dimension that we need to understand social networks very well to improve the national library experience. The second one is enrich metadata. So uh, if in the same example, you have a, a very special community, uh, in a thematic sense, and you can develop in social apps. Uh, uh, Facebook is a good example. We are doing that. You develop an app uh, in which you can uh, answer people about some questions that you need to improve your metadata inside the National Library. So you put some questions in the app uh, in an aleatory way, and from time to time, you send a question inside the community. 
and someone will answer that. Another one, another one. If you have, for example, uh, using a collective intelligence algorithm, if you have, uh, uh, you know, 70% of the answers in the same, we can recognize that this is a, a good answer. So you can enrich the metadata from the digital library using a social app. So it's a way to connect the both. It's the second point. The third point is to diffuse, diffuse content. So if you understand uh, how people are searching, as we are, were saying, uh, if you understand not just uh, the, the, the texts they are putting inside the social media, but the images they are publishing, the videos they are watching, uh, the sounds that they are listening, you can use uh, machine learning algorithms to understand people are looking for this in social media and I have this in my national digital library so I can connect the both and but you need to think in a national in a national library in a different way it, it's not only uh, a digital repository it's a communication strategy you know uh, I, I'm return to the same point but this is really important if you think that in, in the same way that we, we think in an, a normal library uh, we have a building we have books and people goes there uh, you are thinking wrong you need to think in another way you need to go to the people and social media gives to us the, 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 the information that we need to connect to that so diffuse information it's a very very important strategy uh, it's another point that we, we can keep conversation, some uh, experience about that. And the fourth is engaging people. If you discover yeah, uh, for sure that you have millions of people using social media nowadays, uh, it's impossible to talk with each other. But using strategies to collect the data and studying this data, you can discover hubs. You can discover people, that they are the influencers. So if you discover, for example, the influencers inside Facebook about a topic, and you have so much information in your national library about that, and you want to diffuse that, you can connect the hubs, the influencers, with this content. Oh, do you know? And you can present the content, you can even... Uh, understand what this hub they are he is doing inside the social media even help him and by the other way these people will uh, share thousands of links and it will grow us up in its chaos uh, very fastly so uh, engaging people we have four examples here to to, to use social networks uh, and this could improve a lot on the strategy of the National Digital Library. In fact, you need to have a different strategy to collect the data. If you look just inside your system, you understand what people are doing in, in their borders, okay? But if you understand your social media, you need to even create a team uh, to collect data and to understand this data related with the targets that you have. And for example, you can collect geographical information uh, nowadays in social media. So you can understand what people are talking about in different uh, parts of the country. And you can understand, for example, in holidays, what people are talking about in holidays. Maybe you have some important contents related with holidays. You can use the, 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 this kind of special events in social media to diffuse the content, to people know, to people engage with your social media accounts. But you need to look to the social media, not just for your information system. The question is, you need to uh, create uh, some kind of that warehouse to collect data from different social medias. I don't know the scenario of the, which are the most uh, useful social media here in India. I don't know. In Brazil, for example, is Facebook, uh, follow it by WhatsApp, and follow it by Facebook Messenger, follow it by uh, Twitter. Uh, these are the most important social media. I don't know here in India, but if you collect data, for this and try to understand the trends. Try to understand in uh, some target, in some 
interesting points for you to experiment a strategy. For example, you can begin your strategy re related with uh, transport. You have, a, for example, a problem of uh, huge uh, traffic here in New Delhi and you want to diffuse some digital contents related to this problem. You can track this and try to experiment how people reacted when they receive the content and you can provide some pieces. You, you need to do that. So you need to create a strategy to divide your digital books, for example, to provide the, the, exactly the number of the page. But you have technologies for doing that, using HTML uh, inside PDF. You, you, you can do that. It's not a problem nowadays. But the main point uh, that I could say is you need to have an operation uh, collecting data from the social media and trying to match those things. Doing that, you will understand the human dynamics uh, of the social interaction. Understanding that, you can create uh, special campaigns and if you, it depends of uh, the funds that you have for doing this operation, but you can, you can engage thousands, thousands of people per day, per week, and after maybe some months, you can improve your strategy. Maybe not just uh, uh, diffusing small contents, but diffusing something more structured, uh, some invites. Oh, what do you think about to follow uh, this workshop or to follow this certificate? What do you think about? And you can measure that uh, with some special kinds of indicators and metrics and seeing the result. It works really, really well in Brazil, so it's what we are doing. In this sense, we have uh, uh, almost the same situation in Brazil because we have 274 languages spoken in Brazil. I don't know if you, if you know that because they are uh, uh, very small groups of people that use their, this language for indigenous people. Uh, but we are discussing, for example, with the Museu do Índio, which is a very special museum that tries to collect uh, content uh, created by these indigenous people, how we can improve our interfaces uh, to provide uh, this, th those different languages in the same system. The problem is, it's not that just they talk in a different language, they think in a different way. For example, if you can put together some traditional people in Brazil and to recognize an object, they not will say to you a word uh, which means uh, this object. They will begin to tell you a history, a, a history about that object. Uh, in which, in the middle of that history, the sense meaning of this object will appear. So, how can you create a search engine based on that? And for us, we are trying to discover how to create a, a new kind of search engine based on their experience, uh, I mean by experience, by the way that, uh, that they keep a relationship with those objects based on histories, based on timelines, in a completely different way. So this is what we are doing in Brazil. Uh, I don't know if this is the same situation for you in India. We are learning too. We are in the beginning of that. We, uh, we begin this year uh, to talk and to research that with the museum, Museu do Índio, but uh, we don't have so much progress on that. We are learning too. And that we are in the basic steps, I mean. Well, I think you are uh, very effective. <laughs> you are working since 2015 and you have so much progress uh, since then. For us, it's completely different. We are working since 2014, but we don't have the same infrastructure that you have here. So I'm, I'm really impressed by that. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's really good to be here and seeing that because uh, we need to show this kind of experience uh, in Brazil just to say to the government if you, if you made the right decisions, if you take the, the right decisions, if you found uh, a good project in this way, you can arrive in this kind of results. Uh, we are trying in Tainacan project, in the project that uh, I am ahead for, we are trying to solve the problem of the small institutions 
uh, the independent groups, because we don't have a strong public policy, uh, as I can see here in India. For example, yesterday the, the secretary was here uh, talking about the, the, the importance of this initiative and he announced and the, the funding for the next three years. So uh, you have the political uh, partnership to take the right decisions and to move in a way. In Brazil nowadays we don't have that. So this is the most uh, important problem that we have there because technologies change all the time and we can learn with different experience. And we, it's for this reason that we are developing Tainacan for the independent groups because they don't need to be funded by the government. They can move themselves independently. So if we can be able to connect this independent network and create some sense of uh, uh, sharing of content between them, it's a, a important step in Brazil. But here is different. So uh, it's, it's a very special situation that we from Brazil can observe here in India. Maybe learn with you because you have a, a, a strategy to create that. So I'm really impressed.